Wellness Podcast. Brandon, how are you doing? Good. It's been quite a quite a a week for you. What's going on just other than what we're going to talk about today? What's going Iowa State won last night by the skin of their teeth. What was the final score? I don't know the final score. I was too busy texting Mark um, about Isaiah Brockington. I was like, holy cow, this dude's unreal. And I knew Mark was probably in like completely in drink, like sweating up yeah. at the game. Just he like was at the game. Too. Yeah. So he was going nuts. So I was texting him because I got home late last night um, and got to see just like the last two minutes of the game. And I was, I, I thought Iowa State was done for. And Isaiah Brockington said, uh, not so fast. They pulled it out. That's that's pretty cool to see. So Mark's pretty sure that they're gonna. He's gonna be going uh, on a trip to be watching them. Yeah, somewhere. he had his dance shoes on today. Yeah, his tap shoes. Yeah, he he, he was already shuffle ball he was already across think, the floor. Yeah, he was like tap dancing his way through the. He thinks he's going dancing already. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but in who are you feeling jealous of this week? Oh boy, jealous this week. Well, there'd probably be a you know. With the 40 under 40 that we're going to talk about a little later. You just. A lot of those people. Wow. <laughs> just, so just, anyway, we're done. Brandon won 40 under 40. We're done. <laughs> um, so there'd be some of those people. We did uh, last night in my hometown, we did the Pleasantville Hall of Fame video recordings of some of those people. So I can't tell you who those, but I am jealous of those four individuals that will go in. Um, it was also a cool, a, a cool night for me to like to be around, you know, two of my old coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of fun. I had a couple moments that I had to make them redo their line, like, you know, five to 10 times. Like they, we probably you only got to coach them. Yeah. So we probably only nice. needed to redo the line like once or twice, yeah. but I thought about all those sprints I've ran. <laughs> the and killers. I, and I thought about those hills and it was like, I could just hear coach Danks or coach Corsman go again, Bingham. <laughs> and I was like, again, coach Danks. You know, I was like, read it again. And I think Sam and Rodney were like, why is he making him read it again? Like, they, he kind of just nailed it. No. You, when you have the power, you have to abuse the power. That's that's what I always say. Yeah, kind of like you today. This is making me a little uncomfortable. I know. That, like, it feels good to be in the driver's seat for once. And I told you, you cannot go off track. You cannot, you cannot go off-roading with this one. Really quick. I'm going to deflect, though. Well, I'm sure you will. Aaron told me that this is off topic, but kind of on the same topic because you also coach your kids, right? In lots so. of things. Yes. Okay. He told me, Aaron Young told me that LeBron James wants to try to do one season of the NBA with his son. Would you do that if you were? So he wants able. to play one, yes. one season with his son? Yes. Would you do that? Oh, I, as I've got this old, no, absolutely not. Like, I can barely make it through. So we started baseball practice a couple of weeks ago and just like bending down to put the ball in the tee that many times and then <laughs> throwing that many pitches and stuff. I was like sore when I walked out. I was like, so, so no, if physically capable. Um, so I'm 38 years old now and I can't imagine. We're still checking that actually. Cause <laughs> I think your mom might've fudged your birth certificate. I actually have been to the doctor too many times lately. So I actually am. I, okay. I do know it now. Um, All right. I would, I would probably not want to stay around that long to play with my kid if I was a premier athlete. But a guy like LeBron James is like he never ages. But would they be on the same team when they play against each other? I don't. I couldn't. I mean, I could dunk on my kids, but I wouldn't want to dunk on my kids. Yeah, but you got to imagine in that family, you know, basketball is life, and so they've probably grown up playing basketball the whole time. His son's never beat him in anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Probably not even in horse. And so, like, that ability for his son to be able to go play basketball against him would be probably that moment that he beats him for the first time would be on national yeah. TV, you know, with Bill Walton on the call. Yeah. You know, I was going to talk about at Christmas. Yes. I remember, Dad, when I kicked your ass? Yes. Okay. That was my big, that was my big burning question of the day. Holy cow. Just kidding. There will be more. Well, okay. Thank you for asking. I am feeling jealous of someone this week. Who are Brandon. you jealous of? I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous of you. So I was supposed to set you up, set it on no. the T there. No, you're good. Um, um. No, I, I think uh, we are very excited for you. Yesterday, the business record announced the 23rd annual 40 under 40 list. And there was a familiar name on there. You were on there. Joe Butler. Yeah, right. So we had Joe Butler, our neighbor from Downing Construction, and then also um, Billy Weathers, who was on yes. this podcast, the 50th episode. Go check it out. He was also honored. And then, of course, you. So 
big congratulations to you. That Thank is you. such an honor. Yeah, How it is. does it feel? You know, it's kind of weird, um, especially weird, you know, in the sense of this jealous podcast that we created um, to be on it mm-hmm. is a little like, ugh, I don't like it. You know, I, I don't. I don't love being the center of attention. I love being able to put people first. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love the opportunity that we are granted to give to others. Mm-hmm. And so the 40 under 40 thing's a little odd for me because it's, it's one of those things that it, it feels kind of like you're on top of the mountain, ba- like beating your own chest. And so- No, you, I don't think so. You were, so a little background on the 40 under 40. You have to be nominated by peers, colleagues, friends, whoever, you name it. And you had a really great group of people that wrote letters on your behalf. I got to read all of them and ask for a few of them. And, I mean, the things that people said about you, I don't know how much of it is true. Yeah. It's all Everybody's true. Everybody's got a little brown in their eyes. Um, no, but, but you have to be nominated. And then a group of last year's winners, they all read through all the letters. And then from... I mean, I'm sure there are so many applicants because this is the 23rd year that they've done it. They, they, they choose 40 people. Over 170 or 200 That you know, has applicants. to feel so good. That yeah. has, I mean, you're not beating your chest. We're going to have you beat your chest yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But what an honor to be chosen and then, you know, nominated at all. So yeah. I, it's I incredible. Think, yeah, I think you go back to the, you know, it, it does feel a little odd, does feel a little weird. But mm-hmm. then, like, when I started reading, so... I finally made you guys send me the letters. Mm -hmm. And so I started reading the letters and that was probably cooler than the award. Yeah. So when I read some of those letters and and I was just like, whoa, like, and and I sent a text to somebody this morning um, that wrote a letter and I was just like, why did you say, you know, like your words mean more than the award. Mm -hmm. And like the, the fact that you think that of me, powers me to want to do more, mm-hmm. to want to be better, to want to, to want to put ourselves in a situation to be greater. And so through all that, I, I was like, that's probably the power in this. And then it's kind of funny that you, you talk about the 40 under 40 stuff. It's very similar to the jealous podcast. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not as much about the person and, you know, like joking about kind of beating your chest and standing up yeah. on top of the mountaintop. It's about making sure that we empower great people to continue to do great things. Yep. And and that's what 40 Under 40, to me, does a great job of doing is it's really cool to look through social media today and see, I didn't know a lot of these people. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know a lot of these 40 Under 40 folks, but, like, you know that their resume and their track record and what they're doing in their community is amazing. Yep. And so I'm super excited to get to know these people. Yeah. Because what can I learn? How can I be better? And then how can we collectively together create Des Moines and Iowa to be the place that it deserves to be and the place that we want it to be? And so I, through that, I'm like, there's a lot of power in that. There's a ton. There's a ton of power. So anyone that's listening who may be unfamiliar with the business record and what the 40 under 40 is, I'm going to give you a little bit of background right now. Um, so the business record, I'm sure you all, even if you're not from here, I mean, I guess you wouldn't know if you're not from here, but it is an Iowa-based media company that serves business, cultural, and philanthropic communities. And then every year they honor 40 local business leaders who they're nominated by their peers, again, friends, colleagues, et cetera. Um, And then they're chosen by last year's winners. Um, The requirements are that they are local, be under the age of 40, which again, we're still on the phone. Old. And have demonstrated impressive career achievements and unparalleled community involvement. And I think definitely you check all of these boxes, but that community involvement for you, I mean, you run a business, you run Bing Bang, you're the CEO, the founder, the visionary, you're doing all this every day. But I don't think we talk about a lot, even when we bring you on here, are the things that you're doing after the work day is over. I mean, I feel like part of your days sometimes just begin after you leave here because you are coaching, you are on boards, you are trying to make your community better. And I think that that is very cool and very honorable. And I'm, you know, proud of you for that. So why was that so important to you to want to give back like that to your community? So reading through you know, kind of those things and, and what what it takes to be a 40 under 40, that's probably where I'm most proud. Mm-hmm. Like 
Bing Bang is Bing Bang, and Bing Bang is not Bing Bang because of Brandon Bingham. Bing Bang is Bing Bang because of the unbelievable people you see through this podcast. You see through everything that happens. And so through that, it it truly is special, like because of the people. But that's not like when you talk about outside of Bing Bang hours, like that's that's where special happens. Mm -hmm. And it actually happens in the middle of Bing Bang hours a lot of times, too, you know, and it if you're gonna be committed to growing your community and you're gonna volunteer to be on the betterment committee and you're gonna volunteer to be on the EO board and you're gonna volunteer to be on the national sprint car hall of fame board, those hours don't stop mm -hmm. and they don't have set hours, you know, and it's, it's one of those things where if you're gonna do that, you have to commit to do that and you have to break time and you have to find time to make those things happen. And, and, Every time that I feel like I get overwhelmed and every time that I feel like I've got too much on my plate, I look back to the people that were super impactful in my life. Yep. And so I look back to the teachers and I look back to the coaches and I look back here lately, it's a lot easier to look back to the people in your community that were super impactful and successful because they're passing away. Mm -hmm. And yep. so... So I'm, I've been to funerals here lately and I've done some things here with, you know, just legendary visionaries in our community that people didn't even know how great they were. Yeah. But because of my ability and opportunity to be able to volunteer in my community, I've seen it mm -hmm. from a completely different perspective. So I, I've seen that Leland and Sally Vanderlyn in Pleasantville, Iowa will give every dollar that they have and every hour that they have and do and do these things a lot of people so like leland vanderlinen's funeral a couple of months ago nobody knew the true impact that he made and he didn't care mm -hmm. but in those moments that that's rare these days too and uh, that, in those moments of where i feel like i need to stop i need to i need to say no to something which i can't um i i need to not do any more i get my um my kind of drive and my determination from those people that came before me from those people that paved the path that you have to give your time. And, and Dennis Murphy's another one in the Pleasantville community that he's done everything in our community. And it's funny, like, I don't know why, but when I ask him to do something, he, he can't wait to do it, mm -hmm. you know? And he's like, and so it's just, I feel like it's that mutual respect to that. If you're willing to show up and roll up your sleeves and do it, um, it's a lot easier to ask other people to do things too. And they'll walk alongside you. And so, it's tough though. I mean, to balance your time and to figure out how to, how to be a great business leader and how to be a great community member and how to be a decent father mm -hmm. and how to be an okay husband, mm -hmm. I, I, that doesn't come natural and that is not easy. And I, I think in our world, we want everything to be easy. Well, the things that are hard are great. And so you do have to put that time and that effort and that work into all of those aspects. You can't just, you know, be great in one and be terrible in the other. Like it, it's balance. And, and so that's where I feel like through my endeavors, it, it's not about Bing Bang being the greatest in the world. Like we want to be the best. Absolutely. But big picture is we want to try to like I want to try to create a ripple. Yeah. And, and I want everybody that we interact with to be better because of us. And so how can we continue to kind of put that spin on the world mm -hmm. and I've noticed that that's different. And so um, we're just going to continue to be different and that's okay. And it might mean that we march to the beat of a different drum and all of that, but like, that's fun. We definitely do. And I, you know, I love that you talk about all that and the people in your community. I, something that is said a lot and I think it's very, very true is you are a product of all the people that you surround yourself with. So making sure that you are surrounding yourself with those people in your community and giving back and doing the work that needs to be done. And even if you're not getting recognized for it, I mean, sure, it's fine when you get recognized for it, but sometimes it's even better when, you know, you're not because you can, you can really sleep, <laughs> sleep soundly at night knowing that. But yeah, I mean, I also like you talking about the time and the effort and the energy that it takes outside of the nine to five, because I think a lot of people that listen to this podcast are, I think everyone these days, they just feel like they're that hustler and they have that hustler mentality, but you can't just say you're a hustler without actually hustling, right? Like it takes 
so much time. It's putting your money where your mouth is. It's, it's getting out and doing that work. And so I just think that's so important, especially from someone like you who is a successful business leader. I mean, you made this list. You don't just make that list. You actually have to put the work in. I think people think it's easy these days, and it's not, it's not easy. No, it, it, there's nothing easy about it. And I probably fail more than anybody ever sees. And, you know, my failure comes in coaching my, my son's baseball team or trying to set that baseball program up or, you know, on the EO Iowa board, trying to, you know, sit in a Marcom role and, and make sure that, like, we can just have our social media function. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's things like that that when you get involved in so many things, you are going to probably skin your knees. Yeah. Like, and that's okay. Because yeah. what are you going to do? Like, are you going to just not take the opportunity? Are you going to say no to it? Or are you okay with skinning your knees and failing forward? Yeah. And that's been difficult for me is I'm a perfectionist and I love everything to be as great as it possibly can in every aspect. And so if something's out of whack, I want to go fix it right away. Yeah. And that's been probably the greatest um, learning through this journey of Bing Bang and through kind of my community service and things is it does not have to be perfect. It just has to be done. Yeah. And you have to take that first step and it's okay if you don't know. Yeah. And I think you've seen it. I mean, for five years at Bing Bang and, you know, our two or three years at Vermeer before that, like we don't have the answers. There's a lot of beauty in the figuring it out. I've also learned. And also, like, I, I still kind of feel like we talked about this, you and me, just like in a closed door meeting the other day. I'm like, I feel like I'm not learning anymore. I feel like I'm doing a f decent amount of like teaching what I know, but I feel like I'm not learning anymore. And you gave me a lecture and I think I it wasn't a it. lecture. It was like well, a, I needed it in it the moment. Talk. It was a great pep talk. But it's like, actually, if you do look back five years from when I started here or even two months ago, there is a lot of learning and growing in that not knowing what the hell you're doing yes. and figuring it out. There's a lot of beauty and just lessons learned. And I think that's also something people need to hear yep. from not only you, but everyone. Like, give yourself a little bit of credit. You're you're growing every single day. Yeah, give yourself grace. You know, like, it, it's okay that you don't know the answer. And it's okay to tell somebody you don't know the answer. And it's okay, like, for you guys to come together and figure out how you solve it. Mm -hmm. And... I think Bing Bang, <clears throat> geez, I get choked up trying to say it. No. <laughs> I, I think Bing Bang's done a really good job of we we have been a small business that has been bootstrapped that we didn't have the resources that everybody else, we didn't have the people, we didn't have maybe some of the knowledge. And we went and figured it out. Yep. And so through figuring it out, it's it's I made me a stronger individual everywhere else now that's very difficult when you come back to being a doer mm -hmm. and so i've always been a doer i've always been i'm going to go out work everybody i'm going to you know i was not the best baseball player but i'm going to outwork everybody and i'm going to figure out how to be mm -hmm. the best baseball player even though i wasn't I, mean, um, I saw on instagram that you were a past college athlete i had to do that because i saw a bunch of our <laughs> team i was like Wow, I didn't know that we had so many past athletes, like college athletes running around here. We are stacked with athletes. So I, I feel like not I feel like I needed to prove myself. Like <laughs> I'm a past athlete yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> like just like it was almost like that weird name drop. Like I, I played this, I did this. Um, so, I, but but I think through that athlete mentality, you find yourself continuing to to grow and continue to get better. And in those moments, you 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 get so much better by not knowing, by not understanding what maybe the end goal is. Like you're just trying to figure it out. Like, and, and I think that's where life has kind of taken us on this journey that we're just helping a ton of other people. And, you know, I, I had a conversation yesterday um, with a business owner and it's a business owner that I look up to, you know, and I, I respect the crap out of them, but they they're even in a situation where they're trying to figure out how do they and they just needed inspired yeah and they just needed pushed and they they just needed to be okay being uncomfortable you know and like get comfortable with being uncomfortable and and that's hard and it's not easy to tell yourself that but it's really easy when somebody else tells you that yeah and so you just need kind of led and, and pushed in a lot of those moments 
you ever do you, and you talked about it earlier but when you do get overwhelmed and you feel like this is out of your control and this is out of your control and this is out of your control like how do you reset to because you have to push forward that's what we all have to do how do you personally push forward and dig yourself out of that uh, pool i don't know over what i yeah. i uh i've gotten better over the years of it i used to just take it out on my wife like just <laughs> angel like, is an angel like <laughs> what in the crap like why and you oh, know and then now having a leadership team i can take it out on you and lori yeah yeah um that never happened. and oh, help <laughs> and i i think now probably one of the greatest things that i have going is so much mm -hmm. you know so I, I looked at it was like a couple weeks ago i think there were there was just so much chaos coming at me like from every which different direction and and any one of those things normally probably would have like set me on a spiral or or to the mountains you know like mm -hmm. every which different direction but because they all happened together it was you know solve it deal with it figure it out move on and i couldn't hyper focus on any one of those so i think kind of my one of my greatest gifts is having so much going on mm -hmm. that i can't focus on one thing for very long and i i can't anyway um just being who i am um but the minute that you know we i have a bad day or a bad meeting or or we we let somebody down um I'm probably in my car headed to a basketball game or a baseball practice or, and you can't bring that mentality or that attitude into those kids. Right. And, and so it, it all, it never fails. It seems like I'm like, gosh, I do not want to have to go to baseball practice tonight. Like I've got to go lead, you know, 12 kids tonight and I, I don't want to let them down. And, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I'm not, you know, whatever. But in those 15 minutes to 45 minute drive, it's like, get your shit together. Yep. And nobody, like, nobody owes you anything. Nobody cares what you've been through today. Nobody, nobody really gives a shit what you're doing, but what you're going to be right now in this moment present. And, and I think that's been probably the, the greatest learning, you know, through all of this is just be present. Like, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what happened five minutes ago. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in the future. Just be in the moment. Yeah. And just enjoy the journey. Because if you're so worried about trying to, you know, be perfect and do all these things in the right way and just enjoy the journey, mm -hmm. just just understand that, you know, the, the fact that people are there for you to support you, to be around you, to that you have the opportunity to, you know, to give, like, just be in that moment and enjoy the process. Yep. I love it. So going back to those kids that you coach, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, it was a no brainer. I was, I was going to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Like 100%. Like actually I probably would have been a professional sprint car driver. <laughs> like there's no doubt I would have been Casey Kane or <laughs> Kyle Larson. Um, I think my husband wants to be Kyle Larson. I think he does I'm like, too. I think you're older than him. So you can't. I think I think when when Jeff grows up, he does want to be Kyle Larson. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if that comes true for him. So, I don't know. It's kind of funny. Like I I had a decision as like a a sixth grader. I was it was like eleven or twelve years old. We had this little go kart track in Newton, Iowa, and I wanted to race really bad. Like I just I know I would have been great. Like I just I can feel it. I, <laughs> I was the next Kyle Larson. I was Kyle Larson before <laughs> Kyle Larson. Um, and so my mom kind of gave me that opportunity. Do you, how bad do you want it? Like, we'll make it happen. If you want to race, we'll go race. But guess what? You're not playing baseball. Oh. And so I was like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know it was this or that, Damn, you know? Mom. And so she kind of put that ultimatum down. Like, don't you wish people would do that to you now sometimes? No. I do. <laughs> Choose. <For me>. Um, <laughs> it, uh, and so, you know, it was baseball or, and we were going to travel. We were going to play a lot of travel baseball. We were going to go a lot of different places and it was going to be costly and it was going to be a, a ton of time commitment. So you kind of had to do one or the other and all my friends were playing baseball. And, and so I was like, Man, I don't know that I can make that commitment right now. Like baseball 
is kind of the next, you know, six years ended up being 10 more years, you know, like, and through that, I was just like, I got to play baseball. And so we, we still go to the races and we'd still watch it. And, and the races are a big part of my life still, like with the sprint car side and everything. And so it was, it was a tough decision, um, but probably the right decision, you know, and then growing through baseball was the life lessons that came through baseball, through sports. Like I bring those in every meeting and every aspect of life is, you know, what I learned through sports. Yeah. Yeah. Sports are good. Even when you're not good at sports. 100%. Not good at sports, but that is okay. Okay. So Whatever. I heard you were like the point guard of the basketball team. No, you heard wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, power forward. You are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, if I'll tell you a story after this about Linville Sully. Just look up the girls who I would have played against at Linville Sully, year two thousand six, two thousand five. Are oh. they good? Oh shit, were they good? They were great. Linville Sully, they're all tall and Dutch. They're always good. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I am. Okay, you just did. So everyone wants an opportunity to sit down with someone that they look up to, a business owner, and just pick their brain, especially if, again, like a lot of the people that listen, they have the hustle, they have the drive, they want to do this someday. So I'm going to ask you some very important questions, okay? Okay. This is about your character. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I'm a night owl. And why is that? I, I think it was kind of growing up. So my brother's older than me, um, and he was a night owl. And so I just wanted to be like him. And so, like, if I could watch Sports Center with him till three oh, in the morning, I would. Saves the shit. And and then, but that's terrible to be a night owl because I need to be an early morning person, and I I struggle with that. Like, I can get and go anywhere in the morning that I need to, but I could I could stay up until any time. I'll I'll work all night, yeah. like because like I kind of enjoy those hours. But now it's weird, like when you get old. And you have kids. We've we've established you're not old. Well, when I, I'm getting old, then I am old. And when I get old and I have kids, man, when they're asleep, I'm asleep. I'm like, I'm done. Unless yeah. I have something to do, and still sometimes that doesn't take precedent, I'm just like, you know what? It's game over. Like, I'm out. I like that you say that because I give um, Gary V a lot of shit because I think a lot of people follow by the Bible of Gary V. And he's like, you have to get up at 4 o'clock every morning. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do this. Or else you won't be successful. Success is what you make it. And success looks a lot of different ways. So I have to say to Gary Vee, Brandon's successful. And he doesn't necessarily get up at 4 o'clock every I, morning. I probably could be more successful by getting up, you uh, know, and doing it. Like, Yeah, I'm I, just telling people to yeah, not listen to Gary Vee. Because uh, he sucks. You can be more organized. You can do everything better. Like, yeah, absolutely. But it's it's one of those things that... Just be you. I love it. Okay. How do you like your steak? steak? You're a big CEO of a company. You're an important guy. How are you ordering your steak? How should how should the next guy order their steak if they want to be a big, important CEO? So I believe you need to. We, we kind of found this out on Forum Retreat um, <laughs> with my EO guys. And so it's got to be it's got to be medium minus. What's that? So it's basically like. So medium plus is like medium well. Wow. So medium minus is medium rare. Why don't you just say medium rare? And then? so I'm like, that's you so look like a it's so dork. It, and so medium we minus. were so we all ordered our steaks like that on retreat, just like a couple. You said medium minus. Yeah, and the guy the the waitress was just like, if you have the waitress at a high end steak restaurant confused, you're not doing it right. That's a so you answered wrong. No, I, I answered. <laughs> funny like, okay it was it was pretty good <laughs> i'm a medium well guy i probably shouldn't be but medium well yep. damn you put ketchup on it too let's go sometimes <laughs> well we need new ketchup by the way because i saw sam drain the ketchup <laughs> bottle this morning to put on his breakfast casserole and i wasn't going to say anything but not sure about that combo sam not sure a couple pounds of ketchup on it i'm just sitting here in the judgment seat it feels good it feels good to not be judged for once and to do all the judging just kidding Bing Bang. We get a lot of questions, sometimes a lot of shit about Bing Bang. It's Big Bang. It's Big Bang. Who's the bang? What? Why Bing Bang? There was really no grand plan on Bing Bang. So Bing Bang was set to be side-by-side -side media. Um, and Angel, my wife Angel, had like 
this whole PR background and in, in that side of the world. And, and I kind of have that content side. And so we were going to do it side by side yeah. and, and it was going to be side by side media. We were doing some sprint car stuff. So I was like, it's going to be this really cool logo with like <laughs> race car wings and stuff. And it was, it was very limited, you know, minded, limited sight, you know, like it was, it wasn't big vision and, and I didn't know I had a ton of big vision at the time either. And so I just was like, will this work down the road? Mm -hmm. So I started kind of thinking about it in different terms. And then I was like, well, I need a website. And so I started trying to find <laughs> websites, which now is probably a hobby, I would say, of just buying, <laughs> buying URLs. We let URLs. a couple expire the other day and we had to kind of pour one out for those websites. Yeah, was, They've been with us for five years. Yeah, when, when you start letting URLs go, it feels wrong. Because <laughs> um, then I'll go buy 10 more t tomorrow. Um, and, and so I wanted something catchy. And I, I wanted something that when somebody wrote it on a whiteboard, they were like, that's cool. It is. Look at it in neon. It is. It's crazy. Does and that ever make you feel so like good and emotional? I think I'd cry a lot. Yeah. It, there, there's a lot of tears. It's just maybe not good tears. <laughs> um, and, and so I wanted to I wanted to create something that was just different, that, that stood out. And, you know, you kind of look at some of them that are successful and, and they're just catchy enough. And so I was like, let's just try to find something that's just fun. And Bing Bang kept kind of coming to the top of everything. And then I was like, well, if I can find, like, I'm sure there's a bingbang.com. Like, let's, let's do that. So then as I was going down the process, I couldn't find bingbang.com. And I think it was like a jewelry company or something in New York City. And I get their ads sometimes. And so... Then I came across itsbingbang.com, and I'm like, that's kind of cool. Um, and I think it's something we can build on in a different way. And so as naming the company, I started thinking about what are we going to try to achieve for our customers? And we didn't want to do the everyday. We didn't want to do what everybody is trying to do. We wanted to continue to evolve and be out in front of things. And so what we want to do at Bing Bang is create the it factor for our clients. And so then it's like, Let's just do itsbingbang.com. It'll be awesome. And it was until you have to read it back on the phone to somebody to try, <laughs> oh my to, gosh. To, try to tell them your email address. There's so many emails floating around in the yeah black hole of the web internet. Yeah. So, McKinsey, never got can you it. please send me an email real quick? You know, we're on the phone. I'm, I'm driving right now. Can you please send me your email? Like, how, how would you tell somebody that you're going to send them an email? Okay, yeah. Um, it is ITS. No, what's your name first? Uh, Mackenzie at It's Bing Bang. Okay, Bing Bang, got it. No, It's Bing Bang. Yeah, I got it. Bing Bang. No, I-T-S-B-I-N-G-B-A-N-G.com. Oh. oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was maybe, that wasn't real thought out. <laughs> or it's going to Big Bang. Love it. It's crazy. Whatever. It's a great name, and I love the background. I love the story about it. Okay. All right. What was your very first job? So very first job would have been working for my dad. Um, he had his own construction company um, called BNP Construction when I was growing up, and then it kind of dissolved and moved. Um, and so the very first thing I remember, the very first like work moment that I remember, um, badly remember, <laughs> was uh, I hated construction work. Like I I was no good at it. I had no clue what I was doing. And it's one of those things growing up, your parents just immediately think you're going to be good at what they're good at. Mm -hmm. And so my brother was pretty good at it until he fell off a roof um, <laughs> and like ripped his whole leg up. So I was a little scarred by that too. Like, can I do this? Should I do this? And so dad always just wanted you to help and wanted you to build these things. And, and he wanted me to go trim like this, like, it, so it was like the first, like, I remember it was like the, a loft in the East Village before the East Village was the East Village. Oh, really? And it was like the first loft down there. And I'm like looking at this place and it had all these exposed brick walls and it was it just. sounds tall too. It, yeah. This is scary. It, and it was immaculate. The, the apartment was immaculate, but we needed to do the trim on it. And so dad was out trimming, you know, all the rooms and I'm just kind of hanging out like this is whatever, you know, like, when do I get to go home? 
and he like locked me in a closet and was like if you can't figure out how to trim that don't come out oh, shit. and so i had to figure out how to trim it like and so um I see some parallels to what we do every day now. Yeah, so we're, just lock the door. We're trying to trim ourselves out of a lot of closets so, over here. So I, through that process and working through them, I mean, I learned a lot of things and a lot of hard work, but I learned I am not good at this, and I need to find something else to do. Maybe that's why the work we do now is so subjective. Um, it's not like you build the building and then yeah. there's the building. We build ideas and tell stories and things, and, you know, that can be perceived however. Correct. You don't have a business or a you know, a building inspector coming in and telling you if you did a good job or not, which I think is good. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? What is your favorite month and why? I, whoa. I know. I As a business owner, a businessman, and just a fun guy, I thought you could take this. I, I was going to say December just because of the holiday and – you know, my birthday's in December, and so I was just like, December is probably my favorite, but I've grown to hate December. Um, as a business owner and everything, it just, it's kind of miserable, December is. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, then I was thinking March, um, because of, I, I love March Madness, and I, I just love the storylines, and I love what it does to people. Um, it, it seems to bring community together through sports and and I love that aspect that most of the time people are people and they just they don't want to deal with each other and it seems like through a bracket mm -hmm. everybody wants to talk to everybody about their bracket and while that can be annoying if you have annoying bracket guy in your office like um <laughs> are you our annoying bracket guy? who's really, our annoying bracket probably guy? Sam yeah it's probably Sam <laughs> <laughs> oh. um it, but like I, I love March probably. March is probably that it's getting warm again around Iowa. Yes. We're getting out on a ton of shoots and it, it just seems like March is kind of where the year changes for everyone. Um, you know, the farmers are getting ready to get in the fields and it's just kind of a cool time. March is good. March is good. Okay. Um, if you could meet anyone, celebrity or otherwise, who would it be and why is it Tom Brady? Just kidding. Who would it be? I, Tom Brady's kinda He's almost dead to me now. Like no. He, it'll be interesting to see what he does in what I would call his second life, you know, like yeah. outside of football now, what does he do? And he's going to be such a huge influencer too in that. It'll be pretty fun to see. I So I don't know who I would – Cal Ripken would be one for sure um, just because of his longevity and the ability to play at a high level for as long as he did. Like that would be special. Brady would be cool just because he didn't have – he wasn't the most gifted. Mm -hmm. But to walk out of pro football as the greatest of all time, like how does that happen? Mm -hmm. You know, so that would be cool. But then I was doing some work last night for the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame, and it was somebody that I would really love, and I'd love to bring him on the podcast, and I'm going to try to figure out how to make this happen, it would be Don Lamberti. And so – Don Lamberti founded Casey's and I just feel like that story of how do you take a little old boy out of central Iowa and create something that is a widely known brand now mm -hmm. would be a really interesting mm -hmm. conversation. And so as I was sitting there doing some things for the national sprint call of fame last night, I'm like, I really would love to hear Don Lamberti's triumphs in his, um, you know, some of those moments that weren't so pretty and, and how he rebounded from him, how he became who he is. And, and then now to watch, you know, an individual like that who continues to make our community better in so many different ways, it's just special. Yeah, very cool. What is your favorite word? What's the word that you drop in meetings and everyone pays attention to you? <laughs> there isn't one that, <laughs> in that. Um, I... So, again, reading some of the 40 under 40 stuff, I would say the word that kept resonating was better. Better. Yeah, and it, it was – I think we're on this constant journey of trying to figure out how we better ourselves. Mm -hmm. And through bettering ourselves, we better everything around us. And and that's what I kept reading um, in those letters. It was that I don't settle, you know, and – where I feel like 
and sometimes maybe this is a fault as well, like in the sense of like, I always feel like we can do better. I always feel like we can be better. I always feel like there is better out there. And so I don't, I don't settle. And I, and I was actually thinking about this on the way in today too, was we don't celebrate too, too much because we always think we can be better. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's weird in the sense of sometimes we don't enjoy maybe all the greatness that is achieved or is accomplished because we always are like, we can do better. Yeah. Like, and, and you're terrible at it too. Like, and I don't know if this is just me and you, it's like a personality trait or what, but like, Sorry, guys. <laughs> we can get to like 90 or 95% down the, um, you know, on a project. And then Brandon or McKenzie have not been involved at all. Maybe the first five or 10% to get it off the ground. And then the team goes and creates like this most amazing thing ever. And then here comes these two Joes in. They're yeah, like, oh, can you change the music? I can know. you, can you uh, do this? And they're just like, Wh why? You know, but I, I don't think it's one of those things that we want to devalue all the great work that's happened or no. we just love that people can rise to unbelievable you know, states that they never understood they could get. And, and so I think the better is we know people can far exceed their ceilings. Yeah. People don't know that. Yep. And so sometimes you have to challenge them, you have to push them, you have to encourage them. And then to watch them break through the ceilings is what is just amazing. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. We, we do need to get better at the, the celebrating. We always say we keep, keep the celebrations short because we do have the next thing to move on to but there's a lot worth celebrating around here absolutely so. all right okay so i'm gonna I, I wrote this question in would you ever get a personalized license plate oh, I don't, <laughs> it's interesting right like i've actually looked at a few i'm just like what would i get banger banger i B think banger. It, it might already be gone <laughs> i i always thought i would get like you know, like being 19 or something, but then my brother's so like locked in and then. He, Does he have one? I'm pretty sure he's got like Seahawk, I think, or something oh, goofy. Boy. I looked to Shelby for that because I know she probably would yeah, have Shelby thought. Knows. Yeah, Shelby um, knows. And then, um, yeah, I don't I don't know that I would. <laughs> Bing, bang, like I probably. B-N-G, B-N-G. It's oh, such wait, a. No, that just be bing, bing, it's bing, almost like bing, 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 bing. like having a personalized license plate. It's like having a tattoo, right? Like it's never going away. So like you better love it. So I just. I mean, <laughs> I think it's a little less temporary <laughs> than that. <laughs> or, yeah, it's more we were, temporary than that. We were with a client. Me and Mark were with a client this week, and they were talking about uh, license plates, and it was just funny that like he had to change his license plate once he started coaching kids he was like i don't know that this is probably suitable like yeah you gotta be careful out there you gotta be careful all right brandon well what are you gonna leave this podcast one piece of advice what are you gonna what are you gonna drop what knowledge are you gonna drop we covered a lot i think you know the the 40 under 40 stuff is probably more of a validation you know type that you're doing the right things that and sometimes and i know as as a business owner and as a leader in any aspect whether whether you're leading your family whether you're leading a business whether you're leading a department whether whatever it is that you're leading leading a classroom um you you continue to probably kind of wonder are you doing the right things mm -hmm. are you on the right path and i think the the biggest thing is is be okay with not knowing and and say yes to the opportunity. And so it might not mean that you have all the answers. It might not mean that it, just trust your gut. Um, say yes to the opportunity and be willing to continue to get better, continue to learn. And through that, you're going to find yourself raising your standards, your your game, your ceiling higher than you ever believed. That's amazing. Um, yeah, congratulations, though. What an honor. You and me have known each other for a long time. You can really grind my gears more than, like, anybody that I know. Even sometimes, like, you're the guy that just can just make me mad. But you have also been responsible for a lot of my growth, and so I appreciate it. 
I'm proud of you. I would imagine me grinding your gears if a I, lot is to grow you, challenge you. Um, sometimes I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I think it is. I think it is. Those it's like you go back to your coaches. They yep. they made you run. They they said things to you, they pissed you off. But then you go home that night and you're like, yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. So well, I have maybe had a, couple a lot weeks of later. those drive, to- drive homes where I'm thinking, yeah, actually that does make a lot of sense. So proud of you. It's been cool to see you grow. I've known you for, again, a long time. So I don't know if any of us thought that this is where we'd be or you'd be, but it's an honor. And I'm glad to see you recognized um, amongst a group of other really incredible people. So congrats. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely probably not where I anticipated or visioned this all being or going. And it's probably much greater and better than I expected. It's so, never too late to become a pro athlete. I mean, look at Team Schuster. So you could yeah, always I go could to the Olympics. Curling? I could do that. <laughs> we, we saw those guys up in, you know, like live in person. I think we could do it. Yeah, yeah. We have all the I same could, qualities. I, I think I, I still... have to grow your hair out. But. Ooh, I could do that too. <laughs> Um, I, I do think I still have a professional athlete life left in me. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's going to be, I think I could still be a professional race car driver. I think so too. I, I think that's still in my cards. Probably not, but. The coolest thing about being an adult, <clears throat> and I've realized this lately, like we all, we're always like, oh, I wish I could be a kid again and do that. No, when you're an adult, you're literally like one person away from being a professional race car driver. Yeah. If you want to be. So, and you are really cl- you're closer being on that, well, that board. I kind of I, I was kind of a professional race car driver last year. Like we took a team outing to slideways. <laughs> yeah, you would have gotten kicked out of the race for causing a terrible accident. No, Robin oh. Drayson. <laughs> Robin Drayson. All right. Well, congratulations and yeah, everybody, be on the lookout. We're going to be posting it. I'm sure it's already posted. But when is the event? And and yeah. Ah, uh, it's the end of March sometime. I don't know the exact date. I, I think just got a babysitter so I can go. I think it's like the 30th or it's somewhere in there. Um, my wife kind of threw, threw a trip on our calendar too. Oh, shoot. Um, She knew the dates. Like I had no idea. Don't but. blame Angel for this. She's just trying to have a good time. So I think we're flying back into town that Tuesday and then the event's the Wednesday. So I may or may not be there. You're going to be super tan. Wear purple. That is definitely your color. We have decided that. Color Run Des Moines. Mm -hmm. uh, House of Color. House of Color. Yeah. Color Run Des Moines would probably be an event where you're running (laughs) and they're throwing color on (laughs) you. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today on this very special podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Bye. (laughs)